Okay, 7b, we're going to continue on now with number 27. 27, the directions are to use the at least once to figure out the probabilities. Getting at least one tail when tossing four coins. At least one means we're the only thing we don't want to do is get none on all four tosses. The probability of not getting a tail is one half. If you can do it in four tosses, you're going to take that to the fourth. That would be the probability of getting no tails. And I would take one minus that to get at least one. Looking at a tree diagram, just to kind of help you understand that, I'm going to get a head, tail, 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 and then again head, tail, 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 head, tail. There's a head in everything that goes out this way, so all of those have a head in it. There's a head in all of these, and there's a head in all of those, and there's a head on the last one here. The only one that doesn't have a head in it is the tail, 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 tail. There's a half a chance that I don't get a, that I get a tail on the first toss. There's a half a chance on the second, a half a chance on the third, half a chance on the fourth. Uh, so a half times a half times a half is one sixteenth. One minus the one sixteenth means there's fifteen out of sixteen. And if you were to count here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of the 16 outcomes have at least one head in them. So we did it by doing 1 minus that. That's the at least one rule. So I'll, now I won't do the tree diagram on the future ones here. We'll get it. At least one head in to tossing six coins. At least one head means, oh, at least one tail was the first one, so that all heads was the only one I didn't want, so that would be 27. 28, at least one head would be uh, all the above ones gone, uh, and it said six times, so I'd have to go two more times, but the only one that doesn't work is the tail, so that's one half, six times, get tail every time, that's the only chance way I could not get ahead at least once. So I take 1 minus that, so that's 1 minus 1 64th, which is 63 64ths. 29, people were having trouble with these at least. Rain at least once in 6 days, where the probability of rain is 0.2. Well, the only way I wouldn't get rain at least once would be no rain. And the probability of no rain, if the probability of rain is 0.2, the probability of no rain is 0.8. In six days, one minus that, and you calculate it on the calculator. 30. Getting high winds and at least once. So the only way I wouldn't get high winds is not having high winds all so many days, 20 days. And the high winds on a single day is point, a 10% chance, 0.1. So I would, the only way I wouldn't get high winds is not having high winds, which is 0.9 chance. And I'd have to have not high winds all 20 days, one minus not having high winds all 20 times. So 1 minus that would be having at least one day of high winds. So you can work that out on the calculator. Um, and let's see, that was 30, 31. Purchasing at least one winning lottery ticket out of 10 tickets, probability of winning is 0.01. So the only way I don't get at least one is to lose all the time. So if it's 0.01 winning, it's 0.99 of losing, and I'd have to lose all every time on the 10 tickets, 
And so 1 minus that would be the probability of getting at least 1 winning. Getting at least 3, 1, 3 when rolling, 3 fair die. So at least 1, 3 means the only way I wouldn't get at least 1, 3 is to get no 3s. There's a 5 out of 6 chance of not getting a 3. No 3s all 3 times. 1 minus that would be an example of using the at least 1 to calculate it. And I'm leaving these for you to punch into your calculator and get the results. Okay, next one is 36. 36 is... Um, this says the sort of probabilities. Rolling a 3 or a red number on a die where on which the even numbers are red. So a die has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. The evens are red. And there's the 3. So if I want to get an even or uh, a red or a three, there's one, two, three, four out of six ways to do it. Two thirds. Uh, next one is 39. Drawing three spades in a row from a standard deck when the, draw, the drawn card is returned. Chances of drawing a spade the first time 1 out of 4, or 13 out of 52. And then if I put it back, the second one is 1 out of 4. And the third one is 1 out of 4. And so it would be this, which is 1 64th. 45. Drawing at least one king When you draw a card from a standard deck eight times, replacing the card each time you draw. At least one king. The only way I don't get at least one king would be not getting a king. So there's four kings. Four from 52 leaves 48 not kings out of 52. That's also 12 thirteenths, if you will. Four goes in both of those. Um, and to, on eight draws, I would take that to the eighth. And this would be not getting any kings. Everything else would have at least one. So I'd have to do one minus this. It would give me at least one king. Either one of those calculations should do, do it for you. Now that's 45. Now we'll do... 47. Purchasing four winning lottery tickets in a row when each has a one in chance of being a winner. So, one in ten of winning. And the next one, one in ten. And the next one, one in ten, is large, so they don't depend on each other. So I just take it to four to get four winning ones in a row. So that's one in ten times ten times ten times ten is ten thousand. And there's the answer, 0 0.0001. And for 54. Randomly selecting a girl or a non-soccer player from a 6th grade class which has 12 boys, 7 who of play soccer, and 15 girls of which... 10 play soccer, randomly selecting a girl or a soccer player from a 6th grade class. Well, probability of a, a girl or soccer player. Probability of a girl, see there's a class, how many are in the class? 19 and 15 is 34. Probability of selecting a girl is 25 out of 34. 
or a soccer player, or you add them. Soccer player is 17 out of 34. Minus overlap. Girl and soccer player, that's 10 out of 34. That's using the rule, or you could have just said, girls and soccer players are these three boxes. Ors are three boxes. I just didn't do the whole table. Uh, 12 to the 7, uh, 27, uh, 17, oop, not 30, yeah, 44, 17, 19, 29, 34, 44, there's 44, sorry, 44 uh, on each one of these, I added wrong, good thing I did this, and that's 19, and that's 25, which adds up to 44, but we were doing these out of 44, which is 25, 32, 42 minus 10 is 32 out of 44. Okay, 8 elevenths reduced. And then 57, almost done here. 57, probability, and this is the guilty plea and not guilty, and gone to prison or didn't get sent to prison, 392, 58, 564, 14, they told me in the directions this what totals 1028 we can add these that'd be 450 add these 578 I'm doing it quickly I hope I'm getting this right 12 yeah and this would be 6 5 9 56 and uh, yeah. No. Six, nine, and six, fifteen carry to one, eight, nine, yep. And this would be two and seventy two, eight, twelve, yeah. Okay, so there's the deal. And they said, A. What's the probability of the random select defendant either pled guilty or was sent to prison? Pled guilty, that's these, or sent to prison. And that would be the ones that pled guilty, plus this one. Now using the probability rule, you would do pled guilty, which would be 956, plus sent to prison for 50, Minus what we've counted twice. Well, this way we've counted the 392. This way we've counted. So minus 392 out of the 1028. That's the rule. Or you could have just said 392 plus 58 plus 564. Or 956 plus 40, 58. Or 450 plus 564. Anyway, either way. B. What is the probability random select defendant either pled guilty pled not guilty, that's these, or, so it's going to be three boxes, so we're going to add to it, not sent to prison, that would be these, and so we just add these up, or take this away from that, and we could add 72 plus 578 plus 72 minus what we've counted twice, over, okay? And finally, 62. 62, lottery odds. So what's the probability of getting either a 2? Getting a 2 was 1 out of 10, $2 winner. A $5 winner was 1 out of 50. And a, and a 
$10 winner is one out of 500. Common denominator, an easy common denominator is 500. Multiply by 10. Multiply by 50. So we get 50 plus 10 plus 1, 61 out of 500. And you add them up because they're all separate. There's no overlap. There's no way to, one ticket is a $2 winner and a five or a two and a 10 or a five or a t and a 10 at the same time. So we just get that. That's part A. B, if you buy 50 lottery tickets, what's the probability that you get at least one five? That would be one minus not getting any winners. And the chance of $5 ticket is not a winner. That's 49 out of 50 or a ticket is not a $5 winner, it's 49 out of 50, and we're gonna do 50 of them. And I think that comes out to be about 0 0.5, no, 0.63 or four, something like that, approximately. That's B. And C, 500 tickets, and at least one $10 winner. $10 winners happen one out of 500, so not getting one would be 499 out of 500. That would be getting no winners all 500 times. One minus that would be getting at least one. And that comes out 0.63, I think. And there's that assignment.